Well, I want to continue the theme that we were talking about yesterday, and that is that the government has decided in their kindness to scrap the three strikes law, the law which targets repeat violent offenders. And this is all at the time that a crime wave is going on in New Zealand of violence, ram raids, gang warfare, and gun crimes. Uh, and I want to show you a little bit more excerpt from the Family Matters episode that I did uh, late last year in November, which talked about why the three strikes law is working. And in this excerpt, it talks about does the government have a mandate from the public to get rid of the three strikes law? Um, the answer is no. And also you'll see an example of some three strikers. And we also deal with that uh, infamous case of the bottom pincher, which apparently was justification for getting rid of this law despite all the other violent criminals. So let's put that in perspective. So let's check that out. The Labour government has no public mandate for scrapping this law, and the evidence suggests it's having the desired effect. A repeated slap on the wrist for violence undermines our efforts to reduce our tolerance for violent acts. And one of the other objections to the law is that it punishes offenders on their third strike with the full force of the law, and they tend to quote the bottom pincher, who under the law should receive the full punishment of seven years for indecent assault if it's a third strike. It's actually worth reading that full, the full facts of that case and read the victim impact statement. But as we said before, the law allows for the prescribed sentence to be different if the court considers the sentence manifestly unjust. But I'm not so sure that the Me Too movement think we should be minimising these types of actions, and rightly so. And despite being eligible for parole two years ago, the parole board did not release the bottom pincher and wanted more treatment to reduce the risk of violent and sexual offending. So perhaps the existing law just needs fine tuning. Ironically, the Minister of Justice, Chris Farfoy, also said, the public don't like this law. The public don't like this law and they gave us that message clear in 2020. We've actually just released a poll that shows that only 25% of Kiwis want to scrap the law, and only 29% of Labour supporters want it repealed. To finish with, let's meet a couple of strikers, shall we? It gives a picture of the type of people being caught by the law. So firstly, a third striker. In 2012, the 26-year-old was sentenced to five months home detention and was given his first strike warning for a vicious assault using a piece of wood. In 2014, he was sentenced to three years imprisonment and given his second strike warning for stalking and sexually assaulting a 17-year-old girl. In 2018, he was sentenced to seven years imprisonment for wounding with intent to injure after stabbing a man in the leg while on bail. He was also sentenced to four months imprisonment for domestic violence assaults in the same year. He has 14 previous convictions, including six for violent offending. Prior to the three strikes law, he would have only received jail time of two years and three months. As a result of the three strikes law, he was jailed for seven years. And interestingly, the judge admitted that, I acknowledge that your sentence will be much harsher than I would otherwise have imposed. Meet a second striker. In 2008, before three strikes, he was sentenced to 20 months jail for the nighttime burglary of a 24-year-old woman's home. His first strike offence was another home invasion burglary. He invaded the home of a 68-year-old woman, attacked her, grabbed her by the throat and threatened her and then robbed her. He was imprisoned for just three years and four months. The parole board released him early, considering he did not yet present an undue risk. Wishful thinking. His second strike was bashing and sexually violating an 87-year-old grandmother in her own home in 2013. Later the same day, he burgled a 73-year-old woman's home with the intention of sexually assaulting her. Now remember, he was on parole at the time of this offending. He is now serving a second strike sentence of 12 years and 9 months imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Without the three strikes law, he would have been eligible for release by the parole board who got it so badly wrong the previous time after just four years and three months. Instead, we are all kept safe for eight more years. And one more second striker. His first strike offence was for an attack on a woman using a knife in, in which he choked and threatened to kill her. 
and this attack was committed in breach of a protection order. For that offending, he was sentenced to two years, eight months imprisonment. He committed a second strike offence while in prison. He raped a woman while participating in a prison work-to-release program operating outside the prison. He is now serving a nine-year sentence of imprisonment. He had dozens of criminal convictions, many for violence against women. Earlier offending includes beating his pregnant partner so badly she miscarried her twins. And some of his violence involved three other former partners. Under three strikes, he will serve up to six years more than he could without three strikes. And women are safe from him because of this. So to conclude the three... Okay, so there we go. That's from uh, just under a year ago, end of last year, when the government was proposing. They have scrapped the three strikes law with the help of the Greens and the Māori Party. Uh, and I also just want to show you an excerpt from my colleague Nick Tuatasi. Now, he's uh, ex-police, uh, and he made some comments on his uh, program Pacifically Correct about the three strikes law. Let's just uh, check out his comments. The government is now looking at it saying, hey, there's a problem with it. So let's just drill down and see what this problem is. Chris Farfoy, who is the Minister of Justice, says that this particular act is biased or it's impacting too much on Māori. Now, you need to understand one thing about this particular law. It was brought in to deal with serious offending. It's not just for every act. It was just two particular areas that it tackled. One was murder and serious assaults, and the other was rape and sexual behaviour that resulted in, in a crime. So those were the two, and there's about 40 different charges that, uh, that make up those two particular the crimes. But here's what happens. When you have a look at it, it's dealing now with the real career criminals. The ones that have chosen this is where we're heading and nothing anyone does or says is going to change that. So when this Reform Act came in, it actually made criminals a bit scared about reoffending all the time. And I recently, in fact, just this morning, I contacted a few police and just asked them, hey, is it working from a police perspective? And what do you think the crims are thinking about it? Well, from the guys and girls that came back to me, they said, look, it was the best thing that ever happened for the policing. But the other thing was it makes criminals think again. It deters them from going out and offending, which is what we want. So important that we understand that with our law, the laws are put in place so that it can keep the public safe. And it's all about turning people's behavior into a safe environment, right? Now, if we change this law, my problem with it is this. We're actually changing the law to suit behavior and not changing the behavior to suit the law. This concept of three strikes and you're knocked out is actually a Samoan idea. And so let me explain to you with a little bit of humor how this worked for us as I was growing up. So if you offended, you get the first strike, the look, and it's something like this. So that told us quite clearly we're doing wrong. If you keep offending, then you get the look with a bit of a threat. Like, that told us I have to stop. Because if you have a strike three, that results in just a full-on hiding back in the day. So we understood that our behavior was changed because of the pressure put on by our parents. And I want to suggest the government that if you take away that pressure, we're going to go back to what it was like before the Reform Act came in, and we're going to see all sorts of weird and wonderful crimes that we thought we'd almost saw the end of. So I want to challenge us, team, what does it mean for us? Well, if you hear that the government wants to change it, start writing to your politicians saying, hey, we don't agree. In fact, Chris Farfoy said that it may change because people don't like it. A very recent survey showed that only a quarter of people didn't like it, 25%. So it's really important that if you're going to change a law, and believe me, we want some laws to change. There were a few laws that rushed through during lockdown. We'd like to revisit some of those. So it's not that we don't like law changes, but the reasoning has got to be solid. And if it's not solid... Yeah, there we go. There's some great comments from uh, Nick Tuatasi. Uh, unfortunately, the government is being kind to uh, repeat violent criminals. But that same kindness doesn't extend to the victims of repeat violent criminals. And we think their rights should come first. Mm -hmm.